Let's go to Halifax. And we made it. We are in Halifax. But what is Halifax, you ask? Located in the province of Nova Scotia, Halifax is the largest, farthest eastern city in Canada, with just under half a million residents, or about half of the population of the entire province. Halifax has long been considered the center of civilization in the larger region known as Atlantic Canada, or the Maritimes, which is to say this collection of small island and peninsula-based provinces that occupy Canada's east coast, extending into the Atlantic Ocean. Now, I've never been in Atlantic Canada before, and I'm only here for a few days, but I'm gonna show you a trick that I do when I am in a rush to learn a bunch of stuff about a place. I don't have a name for them, but they're basically these kind of collage-type drawings I always make when I visit a new place. I try to fill an entire page with a couple dozen little drawings of interesting objects or symbols or other things that I've noticed play some sort of visible role in the local culture. I particularly like drawing things that locals will immediately recognize, even if they're not that recognizable to the outside world. The sort of things that are a ubiquitous part of local culture, but may not make it into the tourism ads or postcards. So anyway, let us see if we can fill up a page with Halifax things. Okay, so thing number one is a row of colorful houses, which is admittedly a fairly standard Halifax cliché. Atlantic Canadian port cities like Halifax have a very iconic style of residential architecture with small boxy row houses, often painted bright colors. It is not clear where this tradition comes from, but you see it all across the Maritimes and parts of New England, and it's definitely something that contributes to the unique nautical vibe of this part of the world. Next, we got a lobster roll, a very iconic thing to eat in this part of the country. Canada is actually the biggest lobster producing nation in the world, with most of that lobster coming out of Nova Scotia. Even though we think of lobster as being a sort of elite food, the sheer amount of lobster that this province produces has given it a less impressive reputation here. I've heard stories of Nova Scotia kids getting bullied for bringing lobster sandwiches to school because it was seen as a sign of being poor. Here is a flag that I saw flying all over the place in Halifax. Can you guess what it is? It looks like it might have something to do with the Red Cross Red Crescent Society maybe, or something very Christian. But no, surprisingly enough, it is actually the flag of the Mi'kmaq or Mi'kmaq people, who were the first indigenous occupants of this part of the continent. As is the case in much of Canada these days, you see a lot of high-profile gestures of atonement and reconciliation for the suffering of the First Nations people of Halifax, and flying the Mi'kmaq flag, especially at government buildings, seems to be a part of that. This red deer head is the symbol of Alexander Keith's, the pride of Nova Scotia. It is a beer company that is pretty well known across Canada, with the Keith's Brewery here in Halifax being a bit of a tourist attraction. This symbol here is a popular brand of clothing known as East Coast Lifestyle, produced by a company based in Halifax. You see all sorts of people here wearing shirts and hoodies and things with this logo on it. You can see that I even got this hat to fit in. This ship is called the Blue Nose, probably among the single most well-known symbols of Nova Scotia by virtue of the fact that it appears on the Canadian Dime. It was an award-winning sailboat used in sailing contests in the early 20th century and became quite internationally famous at a time when I guess sailboat racing was a slightly hotter thing than it is now. The original boat eventually sank, but they built a replacement, the Blue Nose 2, which you can visit in the city of Lunenburg, which is about an hour south of Halifax. The name Blue Nose, by the way, is an old-fashioned nickname for somebody from Nova Scotia. It is unclear where this comes from. Donaire, or meat slices wrapped in pita bread, is another very iconic Halifax food. But I know what you're saying. You're saying, JJ, you Claude, Donaire isn't from Canada, it is from the Middle East or something. And that may be true, but we live in a glorious global world now, and sometimes foods that originate from somewhere else catch on in the most unlikeliest of places. The Halifaxers love their Donaire, and you see shops selling it all over the place, often with special Halifax sauce, 
which is a sweet, creamy mix of evaporated milk and garlic. In 2015, the Halifax City Council even declared the Donair their official city food. So take that, lobster roll. This is a little bird that you see all over Halifax souvenirs. I even saw graffiti of it. It comes from an iconic painting called Three Yellow Birds by Maud Lewis, who was a famous Nova Scotia folk artist. Like many folk artists, Maud had a pretty simple style, and in the original painting you can see it kind of looks like the birds are wearing little baseball caps, which is very cute. So my understanding is that the fame of the birds is kind of connected to a misunderstanding of what they're supposed to be, which is a phenomenon that you do see in art from time to time. Here's another flag that you see around Halifax. It is one that I actually made a whole short about a while ago. It is a newly made flag designed to honor Nova Scotia's black community. The black Nova Scotians comprise Canada's most sentimentalized black community because they've been around the longest, with many of them being the descendants of slaves who fled the United States during the American Revolution and other times leading up to the Civil War. Since most other black people in Canada tend to be first generation immigrants or their kids, this has always given the black Nova Nova Scotians, a distinctly North American identity. And in 2021, a Halifax artist named Wendy Wilson created this flag to honor their unique heritage. You can tell you are at a very progressive place when you see them flying both the black Nova Scotian flag and the Mi'kmaq flag. This blue and green plaid pattern is the official Halifax tartan. Nova Scotia means New Scotland in Latin. And back in the province's colonial days, a lot of the early settlers came from Scotland proper. Though Scottish Canadians are a much smaller share of the population these days, honoring the province's Scottish heritage remains a big part of Nova Scotia's cultural identity. And there are all sorts of major organizations in Halifax keeping alive Scottish traditions like Highland dancing and bagpipe playing and all of that. And of course, lots of plaid souvenirs. So Halifax is a port town, as I mentioned, the historic center of a lot of important port activity for all of Canada, in fact, particularly before the Pacific Northwest was colonized. And as a result, a lot of Halifax's most beloved cliches continue to revolve around nautical type activity. These boat propeller things seem to be one popular motif in recognition of boats. Halifax also has a long history of being used as a naval fort to defend Canada. So you see a lot of martial type imagery in this city as well, you know, cannons and this sort of thing. One of the biggest tourist attractions in the city is the Halifax Citadel, which is the remnants of this big 18th century military garrison up on this hill here. It is easily recognizable on maps from the distinctive star shape it has when viewed from above. Along with lobster and donair, the Halifaxers have a couple other iconic foods as well, including these things, which they call garlic fingers. They're basically just slices of a pizza type thing covered with cheese and garlic sauce. And then there is moon mist ice cream, which is a unique flavor you can only get in Nova Scotia. It's got this really bright and distinctive color palette formed by its three flavors, banana, grape, and bubblegum. I really wanted to try some when I was there so I could give you guys a review, but alas, my schedule was pretty tight and some things inevitably fall by the wayside. I noticed that Nova Scotia has a few distinctive street signs that are pretty sentimentalized in their culture. I bought these postcards, which are done up in the style of these attraction signs you see on the side of the road pointing you in the direction of various scenic things to see. And then there are these blue key signs, which are even more cryptic, but basically mean the same thing, which is to say there is some sort of tourist attraction ahead. But the weirdness of the symbolism has made them fun. This one I've drawn here depicts the bridge that connects downtown Halifax to this other part of the city known as Dartmouth. The Haligoonians really think that this bridge is something special, but every city thinks that about their bridge. As you go over the bridge, you can see these three big orange and white smokestacks, which are pretty iconic as well. Check out this guy, he's dressed up as them. Probably the most iconic landmark in all of Nova Scotia, however, is the lighthouse in Peggy's Cove. It's located in this very picturesque fishing village about an hour south of Halifax in this very 
windswept area with these big rocky cliffs and big frothy waves, because this area represents a kind of platonic ideal of what people think Atlantic Canada is like. You tend to see a lot of photos of this lighthouse and calendars and postcards and things depicting the beauty of Canada. Pier 21 is another very iconic Nova Scotia locale located on the southern coast of Halifax. It's been called the Ellis Island of Canada because this is the port where a lot of steamships carrying immigrants from Europe have historically arrived. In fact, my own immigrant mother arrived on a ship in Pier 21 when her family came over from Holland in the 1960s. I even spotted this little monument to Dutch immigrants to Canada, which I thought was nice. Mother was delighted as well. During World War One, Halifax's status as a major North American port city made it an important transit hub for shipping soldiers and military supplies to Europe. In 1917, however, a ship carrying thousands of tons of explosives crashed into another ship, creating a massive explosion that killed over 2,000 people and destroyed a big chunk of the city. This was obviously an enormous human tragedy and one of the worst in the history of this continent. But over a hundred years later, the Halifax explosion is now starting to become just a sort of generalized, sentimentalized part of Nova Scotia lore. This stylized lion is another popular provincial symbol. It appears on the Nova Scotia flag and you can often see it on merch and stuff as well. It is the Scottish lion from the old Scottish flag in another example of how the Nova Scotians continue to venerate their Scottish heritage. For this one, I drew a bowl of eggs because I didn't know how else to depict this very famous folk song about Halifax, Barrett's Privateers. But I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier, the last of Barrett's privateers. The song tells a story about a pathetic group of Canadian privateers who are kind of like pirates and are trying to seize this American treasure ship only to get all killed and mangled in the process. And then there's this one line where it describes how a mast comes crashing down and smushes the sky like a bowl of eggs, which I've always found to be a very evocative line. This weird red thing is the logo of the Bank of Nova Scotia which is one of Canada's major bank chains. Back in the day, Nova Scotia was a much wealthier province than it is now, and the Bank of Nova Scotia, based in Halifax, was a symbol of their economic power. But in the early 20th century, it relocated to Toronto, where it has been headquartered ever since. You can see that the Scotiabank Centre is the big stadium in downtown Halifax. Yellow fishermen hats are a very iconic symbol associated with maritime Canadians, most because they're associated with fishermen and fishing is the big historic industry in this part of the country. I don't think anyone actually wears them anymore though. What everyone still does wear, however, is underwear. Stanfield Underwear is a big Canadian brand based out of the small town of Truro, Nova Scotia, about an hour from Halifax. The Stanfield family have also historically been one of Nova Scotia's most important political families, with one of the Stanfield sons, Robert Stanfield, serving as Prime Minister of Nova Scotia from 1956 to 1967, and then repeatedly running against Pierre Elliott Trudeau as the Conservative Party candidate for Prime Minister of the country. And lastly, I just had to draw Woody. Okay, so in the Dartmouth Micmac Mall, they have this giant hideous animatronic Christmas tree that parents bring their children to, in the same way that parents in normal places bring their kids to see Santa. And the sheer weirdness of this tradition, which they've been doing for 30 years, has made it a topic of semi-ironic pride among the locals even as the rest of the world looks on in horror. Oh. Well, now we know what the Christmas episode of Squid Game will look like. So there you have it, a couple dozen Halifax slash Nova Scotia things I learned about during my brief time there. Hopefully you learned a couple of things too. I love to travel, but sometimes it is a bit of a challenge thinking of ways to make videos about my trips. So if you've got a unique idea about somewhere I could go and a clever way I could make a video about it, let me know in the comments below. And stay tuned for next week's part three of my Eastern Canadian travelogue. Where am I going next? Well, the answer may underwhelm you.